ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your host, Karim Abu Zaid. I'm coming to you live from Denver, Colorado. That is your show. Let's talk about it. Uh, the phone number is 1-800-651-4814. Uh, we're here to uh, answer your questions, uh, so please call us. Uh, this is Guide Us uh, TV. Uh, your channel uh, and this is your show let's talk uh, about it um, you know Ramadan is just a week away another chance you know I always say this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prolonged your lives to witness another Ramadan because Allah wants you to be back to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants you to make up. He wants you to cleanse yourselves. He wants you to purify yourselves. He wants you to gain nearness to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that is what I understand from the dua of uh, our righteous predecessors. Always, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan. O oh Allah, prolong our lives so we can uh, live uh, Ramadan. Uh, we live until Ramadan is here. And uh, subhanAllah, um, uh, we really want to reflect upon the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, At-Tawwab, uh, uh, which can be translated uh, the grantor uh, of repentance and the one who accepts it. And uh, the name uh, was actually uh, worded uh, with an intense form, uh, which we uh, call in Arabic, uh, uh, the scholars, they say, because of the amount of repentance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts, uh, guides his servant to, and uh, he accepts it from them. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been uh, accepting uh, repentance uh, from sinners uh, from, the day of judge, uh, from the day he uh, brought Adam into this earth until this very day. Uh, that is why the name takes the intense form, uh, At-Tawwab. Um, the name of Allah, At-Tawwab, uh, the one who grants uh, repentance and the one who guides you to it uh, and the one who accepts it from you uh, was mentioned in the Quran um, 11 times uh, one time was mentioned individually uh, by itself fi surat al-nasr idha jaa nasr Allah wal fath wa ra'ayta an-nas yadkhuluna fi din Allah afwaja فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا And one time with uh, the name of Allah, the All-Wise, Al-Hakim, uh, in Surah An-Nur, uh, the story of the slander against uh, the mother of the believers, Aisha رضي الله عنها, قوله تعالى, وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابٌ حَكِيمٌ And the rest of the times, which is uh, total nine, uh, it came in a conjunction or in association with uh, the name of Allah, the Merciful. Uh, so, تَوَّابٌ رَحِيمٌ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا التواب الرحيم uh, so that's uh, uh, simply uh, the uh, uh, situations when the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at-tawab was uh, mentioned. 
Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, as we explore the name of Allah Tawab, uh, we expect you to call 1-800-651-4814, 1-800-651-4814. Uh, call us with your questions. We'll be more than happy to answer uh, you. And I'm going to ask uh, my brother here, Hazim, to try the Skype. Just make sure it's working. If you can call, please, 1-800-651-4814, uh, just to make sure that our uh, viewers have a way to get in touch with us. Tayyip, um, uh, we say uh, the name of Allah, At-Tawwab, um, means three things together. The one who legislated uh, repentance. The one who, uh, uh, I haven't seen it, so you have to try until I see it. Uh, yeah, so you, you try again, please. Make sure that it goes all the way through to here. So the one who <coughs> legislated repentance and the one who guides you to it and then the one who accepts it from you. Uh, those are the, uh, the three uh, meanings of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, At-Tawwab. Uh, the amazing piece about uh, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who uh, legislated repentance, uh, meaning the one who grants it to us by um, prescribing it, uh, by uh, it didn't come through, so that means we're having a, a problem. So. Yeah. So uh, we need to call uh, the brothers just to make sure that it's working because I'm sure a lot of people will try to call but they are not coming through like you. So uh, I guess we have some issue with the Skype. I hope we can take care of it inshallah. But for now you can use the email uh, kareem at guideus.tv uh, and also we have the Facebook page um, uh, which is let's talk about it. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, also uh, uh, get through to us by uh, by doing so, by posting your question there. Uh, until they, they take care of the Skype, I hope they will do this soon. Um, uh, maybe, inshallah, we will, uh, bi ta'ala, uh, carry on talking about the name of Allah, At-Tawwab. Uh, but first, uh, before I, I go there, and, uh, and why are we bringing this up? Uh, the reason why is uh, the tawbah is needed now. Uh, the process of repentance is needed now before Ramadan. Because the Prophet ﷺ, when he spoke about uh, living uh, through until Ramadan, uh, he mentioned that to Ramadanu ila Ramadan and from Ramadan to the next Ramadan. So by the virtue that you get to live uh, until the next Ramadan, uh, mukaffirat, they expiate the sins between them. So by the virtue that you live until the next Ramadan, your sins are forgiven. But then comes in that uh, restriction in the hadith, and I'm, I'm, I'm referring to hadith uh, Abi Hurairah radiallahu an, fi sahih al-imam Muslim, uh, which says, al-jum'atu ila al-jum'ah, from Friday, uh, basically um, uh, salawatu al-khams first, the five daily prayers, uh, and al-jum'ah uh, to the next jum'ah, and Ramadan to the next Ramadan, they expiate the sins between them, provided that you avoid the major sins. Um, this is why we uh, simply, okay, we see here. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, at least we know that it's working now, so please call us with your questions. At least we have one caller who went through, that means. Uh, the Skype may be working now, 1-800-651-4814. So now, uh, from Ramadan till the next uh, Ramadan, uh, they take care of the uh, minor sins. And uh, quite frankly, the... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shuja calling from Ottawa, Canada. Oh, Shuja, how are you doing? 
Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh, I watched the uh, uh, of fasting. Uh, is it only four parts or there's a fifth part coming? Well, the fifth part is about the last ten days of the month and hopefully, hopefully we'll do this uh, in the middle of the month. So it should be uh, posted later on during Ramadan. Uh, the last part oh, okay, is, is, yeah, is about the etiquettes of the uh, last 10 days of the month, but we covered really the major points uh, regarding the uh, the fasting in general, but uh, Yes, uh, no. uh, Chef, I have a question um, uh, If uh, someone nullifies his uh, fasting uh, due to a major sin, either it is uh, drinking alcohol or adultery in an Islamic state and the hat applies on it so he gets the, the hat applied on him. Does he still have to take kafara on his, uh, and uh, of course he has to make his uh, fasting, but he still has to take kafara although he has the hat applied on him on a Islamic state? Um, well, the, the hat deals with the, uh, our brother Shuja here from Ottawa, Canada. May Allah reward you. And by the way, I, you sent me an email. I kept looking for it to send you the test. And I couldn't find it, and I would love for you to just re-forward that email to me, please, one more time. Oh. Uh, okay, so, I'll do that. so I can send you the test for the right belief series. Uh, I remember, uh, I, I kept, you know, I received so many emails, Shujaan, sometimes if I, I don't take care of my emails right yeah. away, uh, it becomes so difficult for me to go back and, and retrieve them. Uh, so please... It's okay, Sheikh, I'll, I'll, I'll send those again, yeah. Okay. Uh, our brother Shuja is asking if somebody who lives in a, an Islamic state and the uh, hudud, the punishments for certain um, uh, major sins are uh, implemented, uh, if he breaks his fast because of, uh, for example, drinking alcohol and the had is being established on him, uh, does he still have to make up the day? The answer is yes, uh, because the had deals with the drinking. Uh, but the uh, making up of, of the day, uh, first of all, the tawbah is required from both. Uh, the breaking of the fast and drinking alcohol both. Uh, the had takes care of the uh, drinking of alcohol, but he still have to make up one day for the day which he broke, uh, nullified his fast. Oh, jazakallah, Sheikh. Wa barakallah feek. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Caller, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, call us again, please. I can't hear you somehow. Okay, um, so now uh, looking at, at, at this hadith, hadith uh, Abi Hurairah, like I, I quoted, uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, pardons us uh, for the minor sins, but the major sins we have to uh, repent of. Um, uh, now the first thing that we need to settle here uh, is uh, the fact that sins are divided into minor and major. Uh, it is well established that sins are divided into minor and major. And I understand that there are uh, few scholars who um, consider sins to be alike, but uh, if we uh, look carefully at the uh, uh, revelation, uh, Quran and Sunnah, uh, we find out that, um, yes, there are evidence that sins can uh, be divided into major and minor sins. Uh, let's take, for example, the verse in, uh, in Surah uh, An-Nisa, قوله تعالى, إِن تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ uh, if you avoid uh, the major of what we made unlawful for you or banned you from doing, uh, we will uh, take care of the minor, basically. Uh, so here is the, the text divided um, the sins into major and uh, others. Qawlu uh, ta'ala fi surat al-Najm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surat al-Najm, alladheena yajtanibuna كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشِ إِلَّا اللَّمَمْ Those who avoid the major sins accept the uh, lamam. In lamam here, the scholars say it's the minor sins. So now, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the, obviously there is a minor and there is a major uh, sin. 
Now the question here is, how do we differentiate this from that? I mean, that's, I think that's an, um, a very important uh, question. How do we know uh, that this is minor and this is uh, major? Uh, we say, uh, uh, just take these names. And I will give you the criteria why these sins came under the, uh, the major sins. Uh, worshipping others, and of course we're talking about the minor uh, shirk. Uh, because major shirk would take you out of the fold of Islam. Uh, if you do it uh, knowingly. Uh, but uh, minor shirk is, uh, is what is meant here. Uh, using magic and sorcery and believing in fortune telling and uh, superstition. Uh, committing murder. Uh, committing suicide, uh, bearing false witness, uh, committing adultery or fornication, cheating, stealing, and lying, charging or paying interest, uh, or what we would really call usury, riba, uh, consuming pork or alcohol, uh, consuming the wealth of the orphans, uh, not fasting for Ramadan uh, without having an excuse, not observing the Salah, and of course there are some scholars who would actually consider you out of the fold of Islam because uh, of not uh, uh, praying. Uh, not paying the zakah, the annual uh, charity, which is the 2.5%. Gambling, uh, oppression and unjust leadership. Uh, bribery, betraying trusts and uh, breaking contracts. Backbiting and uh, slandering. Uh, a lot of us would not consider this a major sin, and it is a major sin in Islam. Uh, breaking the ties of the kins, um, uh, not maintaining the, uh, uh, the ties of, of the kins and, and, and working to, to keep it in, in good shape, uh, disobeying or not honoring one's uh, parents. Uh, why did I name these? Uh, the scholars say that, uh, and, and I'm really referring to uh, Imam uh, Al-Qurtubi, uh, he had a beautiful piece of, of work regarding this subject fi, in his book, at tadkirah uh, he said that any sin which has a had in the dunya, you will notice that these uh, things which uh, some of these major sins which I uh, coded, uh, they do have a had, uh, adultery, uh, drinking, uh, the killing um, and, and the stealing uh, of the wealth uh, of others, they do have a had, so the fact that uh, there is a had uh, now uh, the had here has to be established by uh, an Islamic state uh, a court system uh, in an Islamic state uh, Qadi Shari is not left for individuals I want to warn you uh, nor you should do it in America here because uh, you don't have an established uh, court system or Sharia uh, court system and, and, and that's why we cannot do it individually but uh, we're talking about in a Muslim state where uh, the law of Islam is uh, identified and, uh, and, and implemented and the people know about that. Um, you, you cannot just come to people who do not know about it and, and just take them and uncut their hands. You cannot do that. So um, the second criteria, uh, the punishment for the sin would be uh, hell in the day of resurrection. Like the text would say, uh, and they will uh, be punished in the day of resurrection with hell. Uh, the, regarding the uh, consumption or consuming the wealth of the orphan uh, unjustly, of course, because uh, there is a way to, to take off the wealth of the orphans if you're in charge uh, lawfully. Uh, uh, there is a way if you're a caretaker, there is a way. Uh, but we're talking about that you're consuming, devouring their wealth. Uh, unjustly, it's a major sin because of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned that the punishment in the day of resurrection would be hell. And this was uh, quoted in, uh, in Surah An-Nisa. Uh, Indeed, those who consume the wealth of the orphans unjustly, uh, indeed, they are consuming in their bellies uh, fire. They are placing in their bellies fire. And in the day of resurrection, they will uh, test, uh, they will uh, taste, or they will be burned in, in hell. Uh, so um, right here is an evidence that uh, consuming the wealth of the orphan unjustly is unlawful. Um, another criteria is when there is a curse uh, in, uh, with the sin. 
لعن الله الربا اهو الله كورسز يوزري واكل ان ذا وان هو ريسيفز ات شارجز يوزري تو فور لونز وموكل ان ذا وان هو بيز ذا انترست ذا مارجج اند سو فورت وكاتب ان ذا ريل ستيت جاي ذا وان هو كونتريبيوتس تو the establishment of such a contract and people who witness to, to that contract. Uh, why did I say this is a major sin? Because of the fact that uh, there is a curse in the hadith regarding la'an Allah al Allah curses beside the fact that uh, drinking alcohol would uh, requires uh, you know a had on the dunya but yet uh, the hadith also indicates al uh, the curse. Uh, also ghadab, the, the, the wrath of Allah is another indication the ghadab, the wrath of Allah or laysa minna laysa minna he is not from us man ghashana fa laysa minna whoever cheats, cheats us is not one of us so from that I understand that cheating is a major sin all of these are criteria which the scholars have established to consider the sin to be a major uh, but I want to uh, share with you a statement which is uh, attributed to uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas uh, uh, where he uh, made it crystal clear and he said لا كبيرة مع استغفار ولا صغيرة مع إصرار لا كبيرة مع استغفار ولا صغيرة مع إصرار uh, there is no such a thing called major sin as long as you repent from it. As soon as you commit it, uh, you know, and, 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 and then you turn away, you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance, khalas. Uh, there is no major sin there. Uh, provided also that you fulfill uh, the pillars and the conditions of tawb, uh, which I will share with you in a minute. Um, uh, on the other hand, there is no such uh, thing called minor sin uh, there is no such a thing called minor sin uh, when you uh, simply uh, do insist on that sin. So when you do insist on that sin, uh, in, uh, it would turn it into a major sin, as simple as that. For, uh, these are the criteria for uh, the major sins uh, now for you uh, to come out of these sins uh, you simply have to uh, make tawbah from these major sins uh, somehow can we test the skype again please because i don't know uh, is it uh, the people not watching or 1-800-651-4814 uh, if we can test the skype one more time uh, i would really appreciate it um, so this way we uh, we can just make sure that callers are calling us um, now, uh, if you uh, found out uh, that you actually are indulged or engaged or uh, involved in one of these major sins, uh, then you have to do tawbah. Uh, you have to repent of that. Uh, how do you do this? They say there are five to six conditions uh, for an accepted tawbah. So towards an accepted tawbah, uh, you must uh, come up with uh, five to six uh, conditions. The first one is sincerity. Uh, you must do it sincerely. Uh, dare you uh, stop the sin or, or repent uh, because uh, you're afraid of the authorities or uh, you're afraid of being disgraced by, uh, I guess it's working, I can see that you're there. So I can hope that people can call, uh, inshallah. So uh, you must do this. Tawbah is an act of worship. Uh, repentance is an act of worship. Uh, and any act of worship for it to be validated, uh, it must be done sincerely. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلَصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ This is number one, sincerity. Uh, the number two uh, element uh, to, which is needed uh, to, uh, to, towards, uh, to contribute uh, towards or to, 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 to end up with an accepted uh, repentance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, regret. 
uh, you must regret uh, what you have done in the past. Uh, you cannot, um, in a way, uh, recall the sin and, and say, man, that was fun, I enjoyed it. I, I wish I have the opportunities to do it again. Uh, that is in itself, uh, if you do not have these uh, feelings of regret towards what you've done in the past, uh, then simply uh, your tawbah did not uh, work. Uh, but now, uh, you know, for you to be able to regret, uh, you must be able to recognize that sin is a sin. And uh, that takes a living heart uh, to do that. Uh, a lot of the Muslims uh, these days, they uh, look at what they are doing uh, to be nothing. And uh, there is always one statement that really uh, uh, overwhelms me. Uh, it was made by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. And Anas was addressing the second best generation of the Muslims. Anas was a Sahabi. He was a companion. So uh, he made that statement to the second best generation, which is the uh, Tabi'een. What did he say to them is, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَعْمَلُونَ أَعْمَالًا هي في أعينكم والأثر في صحيح البخاري كتاب الرقاق إنكم لتعملون أعمالا هي في أعينكم أدق من الشعر كنا نعدها على عهد رسول الله من الموبقات you do acts of worship which uh, in your eyes, in your judgment, in your assessment, you consider it to be uh, like a piece of hair, nothing. Uh, but at the time of the Prophet وسلم, we used to consider it major uh, sins, destructive sins. Why? Uh, because of the, uh, uh, the fact that the hearts are alive. Mahua, uh, our righteous predecessors, they made that statement and, and they say, La tandur ila sigar them. Do not look uh, at how little uh, your sin is. Walakin undur ila idami man asayt. But look at the greatness of Allah, uh, the one whom you disobey. Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, a lot of us sometimes admire our worship, our obedience. Uh, imagine the angels do not, the angels do not uh, uh, give up uh, praising Allah, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one second, one minute. You know, in the day of resurrection, they will say, Subhanak, glory be to you. Ma abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. Uh, we have not worshipped you uh, the amount which you, you, de you deserve and they have not wasted uh, one second. وَلَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To him belongs what's in the heavens and the earth and they worship him. يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ لَا يَفْتِرُونَ uh, they glorify and, and magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night and وَلَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ And the angels there in, in that verse يُسَبِّحُونَ لَيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ They don't give in, they don't give up, I'm sorry, one second of, 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 of ibadah. And yet in the day of resurrection they will say to Allah subhanak مَا عَبَدْنَاكَ حَقَّ عِبَادَتِكَ Glory be to you, we have, uh, and this is the positive side of things. What about the negative side of things, which is being uh, disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now you're belittling the sin? Um, uh, therefore, Al Al Abdullah ibn Mas'ud uh, made that statement, and he said, uh, the believer would look at his sins, and he would uh, simply... Uh, Consider it to be a mountain which is about to fall down on him, but uh, the hypocrite, the disobedient, would uh, think that his sin is 
uh, a fly which flies over his nose and is about to uh, is nothing basically uh, is nothing ف, uh, it's it's interesting uh, assessment salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh no i um, have a question since you're talking about uh, repentance and uh, we know in Islam some uh, major sins that you commit uh, it, uh, you know there is a punishment for it in the dunya uh, for example, like a uh, companion that uh, committed that, uh, adultery during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and uh, he was prone to this. But um, if someone repents from uh, those type of major sins, like uh, stealing and stuff like that, and um, they did not turn themselves in, you know, for um, stoning to death or chopping off the hand, does Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala still forgive them? as they need the conditions of truth. No. Uh, I guess our uh, sister, Jazahallah Khaira, uh, is asking a very interesting question, um, uh, which is, uh, first of all, the uh, she's referring to probably Ma'iz and Al-Ghamidiyya and other companions uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who had the punishment in the dunya uh, established on them, which we call uh, the Had. Uh, for certain sins like uh, adultery and, and the stealing and, and, and drinking and, and so forth. Uh, anyone uh, who gets punished uh, in this world, uh, this uh, basically clears his record. Uh, therefore, when the uh, Sahaba uh, decided to, uh, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed janaza on uh, Ma'is, uh, someone who committed adultery and uh, the had was established on him, uh, he actually, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard uh, some of the companions commenting and saying that, are you going to uh, pray on uh, an adulterer? Uh, then Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, immediately uh, responded by saying لَقَدْ تَابَ تَوْبَ لَوْ وُزِّعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ أَوْ سَبْعِي مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ لَفْضِ الْآخَرِ لَوْ وَسِعَتْهُمْ He has uh, repented in a way that uh, the quality of his repentance if it would be distributed on uh, 70 from the people of Medina and, and the other wording on, on, on the population of Medina it would have been uh, sufficient for them uh, this by itself establishes the fact that the record is clear. Al-Hudud kafarat, kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now uh, another issue that, that comes in, 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 in this regard is uh, if you have committed uh, a sin which would require a had, uh, should you disclose yourself? Uh, the answer is no. In the asl fil ma'asit tawbah, uh, the basic rule regarding all sins that you should conceal yourself. Uh, you should not uh, go out there and, but again, some people are like that. They would rather uh, be certain uh, that if the had is established on them in this world, they just want to be certain that their record is clear. Uh, but again, we could do tawbah from these sins, but at the end of the day, there is no certain uh, assurance that uh, your tawbah has been accepted or is valid. Uh, you can only hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and, and that is why we, we, we see the messengers and the prophets and, and that is the scary piece in, in the day of resurrection. They still recall things which I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardoned them for, the, for it. But uh, we, we go back to the basic rule here which is uh, try to conceal yourself, make tawbah, and hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on you. Jazakallah uh, khairan. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, uh, I believe we have two questions here. Uh, question number one is, uh, f uh, I guess uh, our sister, maybe she doesn't want me to say her name, but I will read her question. I have a question about my salah, my prayer. For some reason, the past two weeks, I have been forgetting uh, raka'ah occasionally. I say al-Fatiha, then another surah. 
then I find uh, myself, okay, I'll go back to that question. Let me just pick up that caller first. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah. How are you doing? Good. Um, I just had a question that uh, my brother was saying, can you, uh, how, how do you know, like, um, um, if you don't recite Surah Fatiha uh, uh, behind the Imam, how would that raka, is that raka, is valid or not? Okay, uh, our brother is asking regarding the ruling uh, on reciting uh, Surah Al-Fatiha behind the Imam. Um, this subject is, is really uh, uh, interesting to address uh, in, 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 in 10 minutes or so, but I'll try to summarize it in just uh, two minutes, uh, just to get to the point, uh, skipping on, on mentioning the evidence quickly. Uh, listen, uh, the basic rule that you must recite al-Fatiha in each rak'ah for each rak'ah to be valid. Uh, Whoever does not uh, recite al-Fatiha in his salah, then his salah is invalid, invalid, invalid. And he mentioned this three times. Uh, but now the question comes in, uh, for sure, if you're praying by yourself, individually, by yourself, you have to recite it in each rak'ah. Um, also, if you are uh, praying behind an imam, and uh, you're praying more than two rak'ahs behind the imam, that would mean um, uh, uh, basically uh, dhuhr, uh, uh, asr, and maghrib, and, and isha. Uh, of course, uh, dhuhr and asr are silent salah. Uh, recite al-Fatiha behind the Imam uh, in these salahs, in, in the four rak'ahs. Uh, the uh, Fajr, uh, Maghrib and Isha, uh, the first uh, two rak'ahs of these three salahs is really where the question is. Uh, especially if the Imam does not uh, allow you time to recite al-Fatiha because the Sunnah actually that as soon as you finish uh, l l the recitation of Al-Fatiha as an Imam that you embark uh, immediately uh, on uh, reciting uh, the Quran. Hadith Abi Huraira fi Sahih Muslim, uh, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, how come uh, I notice that you have two moments of silence uh, in your Salah uh, when you uh, say Allahu Akbar, the initial Allahu Akbar, which is we call Takbiratul Ihram, uh, you pause for a while. Uh, you have two pauses. You have two pauses in, in your salah. You pause uh, twice. And the second one is after you finish the, the recitation of the Quran. What do you say, O Messenger of Allah? Then? So over here, the hadith reads that the Imam gets to stop uh, or pause. After he says Allahu Akbar, which is uh, during the time he would say Takbiratul Ihram, uh, I'm sorry, Dua al Istiftah after Takbiratul Ihram, uh, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik wa tabarak asmuk wa ta'ala jadduk wa la ilaha ghayruk, yani or other uh, forms of, of Dua al Istiftah. And then uh, after finishing the recitation of the Quran, in order to uh, separate the Quran from the Takbirah, uh, he also pauses for. Uh, uh, seconds uh, in order to uh, achieve that. So the hadith does not indicate that the Imam should pause after the Fatiha to allow uh, those who uh, are praying behind him to recite the Fatiha. Uh, so that is why uh, the idea came that uh, in the loud Salah then it is not mandatory upon those who are praying behind the Imam uh, when the Imam recites loud that they don't have to recite uh, al Fatiha. Uh, if you uh, go with that opinion, it's, it's correct. But uh, I would rather uh, stick with the statement of Abu Huraira because Abu Huraira, fi Sunni al-Imam al-Nasai, when he narrated that hadith, uh, one of the Sahaba, actually one of the uh, tabi'in, one of the uh, students who were there uh, listening to Abu Huraira narrating that hadith, he said, Ya Rasulullah, the Imams do not allow us to do this. biha fi nafsik. He said, recite it quickly. Uh, between you and yourself. Uh, for, uh, I advise you quickly, um, in 30 seconds, try to recite Al-Fatiha, uh, even behind the Imam, to come out of that gray area. Uh, again, you know, that ruling is, is available, by the way, on, on uh, if you want to get it in details with evidence, 
I think I have uh, some uh, YouTube out there uh, ruling, reciting Al-Fatiha behind the Imam. If you Google that, reciting Al-Fatiha behind the Imam and you put my name on Google there, uh, I think it should come out. I actually uh, mentioned the evidence and, and the view of this and the view of that. And I think it was like 11 minutes, 12 minutes kind of uh, presentation. Jazakallah khaira. Uh, thank you, Omar, but I, I have another question. Okay, go ahead. The, uh, is this a sunnah that uh, when you're uh, doing at-tahiyya to lillahi wa salatu, and then you, the finger, one finger should be, uh, like you should shake it a little bit, or it's a sunnah or not? Yes, it is a sunnah that uh, when you start at tahiyyat at lillah, that a little shake with that, inshallah. You keep it, you keep it raised. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is uh, mentioned that this is harder on Satan than an iron hammer. Uh, so whenever you shake it like this, it's going to hurt the shaitan. Uh, it is true. Jazakallah khairan. And you should also uh, hold it. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Barakallah feek. Jazakallah khaira. Call us again, mashallah, we got some callers here. Okay, let's go back to our sister's question. So I say Al-Fatiha, then another surah, then I find myself uh, failing, uh, falling, I'm sorry, uh, to my knees uh, for sujood and then realize that I have not done ruku'ah. I have not bowed my head in sujood, but my knees have hit the ground. Does this make my uh, basically rak'ah invalid? Should I stand back up and do the rak'ah and continue the prayer doing uh, the prostration of the forgetfulness afterwards? Uh, basically, our sister is asking after she recites Al-Fatiha and uh, a chapter from the Quran, uh, then she immediately goes down to sujood. Uh, we say that ruku'ah is a pillar and pausing uh, while you're saying Subhan Rabbi al azim uh, three, five, seven, uh, nine, eleven times, uh, is a pillar. And coming back from Rukua uh, and pausing is a pillar. Uh, so you have skipped three pillars of the Salah. Um, uh, then the Salah is invalid without that Rukua. And the Rukua must come before the uh, Sujood. Therefore, even if you went down, you need to stand up. But uh, based on the scenario which you mentioned that you remember when you go down in your knees, then go back up and then later on do sujood al -sah. But if you have done uh, sajda one or two, uh, then I would stand up and repeat the whole rak'ah now because you gone a little bit uh, farther into uh, the process. Uh, but if, uh, if you uh, did not do any sujood, you just went down, just stand up again, uh, and then Allahu Akbar, go down for ruku'ah, and then follow the salah from there and do sujood as -sah. But if you have gone uh, farther with, su with sujood, and, and, uh, then I would just ask you to stand up and uh, make up the whole rak'ah uh, once again. Tayyib, uh, we have uh, another question. I'm a meat inspector, uh, and I inspect beef for commerce. My question is that, uh, the beef that I'm inspecting is, is killed by first tunning and then bleeding the cow after. I just found out that the 80% of the cows are killed by stunning. Uh, is it halal uh, to work here as a meat inspector? I would uh, uh, find another job uh, because you're killing animals basically. Uh, according to the uh, Islam, that's what you're doing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're not killing human beings, you're killing animals, you know. Uh, you as a Muslim, I, I would... Uh, uh, why don't you use your experience, my brother, in, in halal, uh, you know, farms? Uh, we need people like you to be out there to make sure that uh, the meat which Muslims, uh, businesses are claiming to be the biha, that is truly the biha. Uh, I think your, your, your experience is so much needed and, and uh, you know, you can open your own farm and I'd love to have your job to, 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 to buy a piece of land somewhere and buy some animals and just, uh, come on, you can do that, you know. Uh, all right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
نعم نيم ستيت اند كويشن بليز السيد احمد اهلا اخ سيدي يور كويشن بليز ماي كويشن از اي اي اولويز ليسن تو ذا اذان ان مكه والمدينه دائما الشيخ بيقول الله هو اكبر ما بيقولش الله هو اكبر بيقول لك الله هو اكبر ليه الحكايه دي بتحصل وليه الناس ساكتين عليها؟ هي سيز وات اجين الله وات؟ الله هو اكبر اه ما بيقولوش الله اكبر الله هو اكبر لا الله هو اكبر ليه بيقادوا الواو في النص؟ بتحصل في الجامع الحرم وفي المدينه ويل uh, الله well, الله في في الجمله يا اخ سيد از مبتدا والمبتدا مرفوع يعني فهو بيرفع الرجل المبتدا لا مظبوط بيرفع بس بيقاد الواو لا هو بي هو ضمه يعني لكن لعله يعني يعني ات مي بي هي اكزاجريتس ا ليتل بيت بات يور سبوز تو سي الله اكبر يعني وذ ا ليتل ضمه بات يو دونت تيرن ذا ضمه انتو ا واو انا Uh, have you ever uh, thought about sending them an email or something? You know, they have a way to communicate with them. No, I didn't. I just, uh, day in and day out, I watch it and I same thing. Al-Musalli bin Nathul, Allahu Akbar. Al-Laman Mu'addin, Allahu Akbar. So many times, and I just, I don't know what to tell you. Allah it's Allah not supposed to be from a place like Mecca or Medina. Wa Akbar, be added wow. Wa wa Akbar. يعني حاجتين الله هو اكبر في ناس سالوني some people ask me who's اكبر I said man it's just it's just it's just a mistake from a guy الحمد لله يعني جيت if you can get in touch with this people and tell them you know hey just try to listen to them if you can watch them from if you have some connection for their TV صلاة العشاء المغرب كلهم I'm just watching them all in the all they always say هو اكبر ان شاء الله اي اي نيفر نوتس ات بيكوز اي دونت اي مين اي دونت باي اتنشن تو ات ميبي بات اي ويل تراي اند سي وات وي كان دو ان شاء الله جزاك الله خيرا ابريشيت يور كومنت الله جزاك الله واياكم بارك الله السلام عليكم الله وبركاته اكسب الله وبركاته سو اي ثينك وي تيكن كير اوف ذا كويشن اوف اور براذر هير براذر از هي براذر سيستر That's a sister Amina. Sister Amina is a meat inspector. MashaAllah. All right. Uh, we have a question here. I have a question about uh, my prayer. I say Al-Fatiha, then another surah, then I find myself... Oh, I already answered that. Okay. Uh, I guess we can go back to Tawbah uh, until we receive more questions from uh, whether email or whether... Um, other uh, uh, means inshallah طيب. so we said that there are major sins and minor sins uh, now you must repent from major sins and we mentioned the first condition for that repentance, repentance to be accepted is it must be done sincerely this is number one uh, number two is regret but again uh, I, I want to say that uh, an, an imagine the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam actually said that that Regret is the cornerstone of tawbah because this is in a way what will mobilize you to repent. The fact that you see what you done wrong and you regret it. But if you don't see it wrong, uh, you're going to be stuck with it. And there is nothing, you know, uh, uh, there is nothing wrong with what I'm doing. Um, and uh, you will actually find some Muslims uh, in a way justifying uh, their acts. Uh, basically saying that I should be allowed to do that. I should be allowed not to pray. Um, I should be exempt. Um, and if, if, if you think about it, uh, this is the attitude of Satan. Uh, when, uh, you know, I really would like you to look, look carefully into the, sto the story of Satan and Adam. Uh, the inputs are identical, but the outputs are different. What, what do I mean? The inputs that both disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen, Satan disobeyed, Adam disobeyed. That's the input, identical. 
both of them committed disobedience all right uh, satan was commanded to bow down to adam uh, he refused uh, then uh, when he was asked uh, he said i am entitled to that the same input um, in, in the sense of, 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 of uh, committing the sin. Adam was commanded not to eat from the tree, and he ate from the tree. Adam and his uh, wife, of course, uh, Hawa, uh, they ate from the tree. Uh, but again, how come Satan was rejected, was cursed, he was not given a second chance, he is doomed, he knows that he's a dweller of hell, and how come Adam was given a second chance? Because of the attitude towards the sin. Uh, Satan justified it, uh, thought that he is entitled to it, uh, thought that, uh, you know, and, 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 that, and all of this comes uh, from that statement, I'm better. I'm better than him. Uh, you created him from clay and uh, you made me from fire. Uh, yeah, but this doesn't make any difference. I mean, the creator uh, of, of both of you commanded you to do something. You should uh, submit to that. Uh, but Adam alayhi uh, salam said what? I'm sorry. Uh, said I made a mistake. الشجرة, haven't I banned you from that tree? Haven't I told you not to eat from that tree? What happened to you? What did they say? Rabbana qala, Rabbana dhalamna anfusana. We wronged ourselves. Uh, now we're counting in your forgiveness and in, in your mercy. So the attitude towards the sin of uh, once it came to Adam was different. Uh, now, uh, Adam regretted. Satan did not regret because he justified the sin. He justified the sin. Uh, 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 you, would, you would then understand the statement of, of, of the scholars when they say, uh, Sometimes a sin which breaks you, humbles you before your Lord is much better than an obedience which can give you a big head. You see, you see that? You see, you, you, you're sensing that? Because uh, Allah does not love those who are arrogant. And sometimes arrogance can come to you from the window of uh, obedience. Again, if, if, if you're so obedient, I want you to go back and look at the angels. They do not waste one second. And yet in the day of resurrection, they will say glory to you, to you. O oh Allah, I have not worshipped you uh, the amount uh, which you, you deserve. Uh, for, uh, it's important. Uh, that you regret. So this is number two. Because we have to sign off in five minutes here. So number one, sincerity. Uh, number two, regret. Uh, number three is to abandon the sin. Abandon the sin. Uh, you, listen, you, you cannot say I'm going to stop smoking weed when you still have weed in the house. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on, man. I mean, you, you, have to, you have to place this in the... In the and then the garbage, or, I mean, place it in a garbage away that you don't, cannot go back and pick it up again. Uh, you know, some people, they actually throw it in the garbage and then they, they go look for it after that. <laughs> some of the brothers were telling me that. I, I don't know that, but they were telling me, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, cannot be, uh, you cannot say, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop adultery while you're still going out with the girl. I mean, uh, come on, you can't do You have to abandon uh, the place where the sin is committed. And uh, remember the man who killed 100 souls. Uh, what did the scholar say to him? Leave that land. Abandon that place. Where you ended up killing those people and go somewhere else. 
comes in number four, uh, which is vowing, resolving, العزم, that you will never go back to that sin uh, once again. That you will never go back to that sin uh, once again. Uh, number five, uh, that uh, you must perform tawbah at a time when tawbah is accepted. And this would uh, mean two things. That your soul did not reach your uh, throat, that uh, you have not uh, at the verge, you are not at the verge of dying, uh, because this is a time when uh, your tawbah is no longer accepted. Uh, or uh, the sun did not rise from the west, uh, or other uh, signs like the Antichrist in some cases, um, the beast uh, coming out. هل ينظرون إلا أن تأتيهم الملائكة أو يأتي ربك أو يأتي بعض آيات ربك يوم يأتي بعض آيات ربك لا ينفع نفسا إيمانها لم تكن آمنت من قبل أو كسبت في إيمانها خيرا أو كسبت في إيمانها خيرا there is the conditional Uh, uh, pillar which is if the sin engages the rights of another uh, human being which is uh, condition number six which is uh, injustices if you have wronged another uh, human being you have to settle that with the individual so these are six conditions that you must uh, you must fulfill uh, in case Uh, if you uh, got uh, uh, indulged or engaged into uh, one of these major sins, uh, now uh, our brother Iqbal just emailed me and he's saying, how will you know if your tawbah is accepted? You can only hope that it is accepted, but there is no way you can be uh, sure about it. But I'm telling you there are a lot of signs, the fact that you... Uh, you regretted the, 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 the act, uh, the fact that you, you fulfilled these pillars. I think all of these are signs that your tawbah has been accepted in a way. Uh, with this, dear viewers, um, inshallah, we'll see you on Thursday, uh, ta'ala, and we're hoping that we can have uh, more people calling us. Jazakumullah uh, khaira. We love you all for the sake of Allah. Uh, till our next show, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He did it? Yeah. All right. I don't know what's wrong with the people.